The season for quarterback Denzel Stockton did not get off to a strong start. Facing the rival Los Angeles Chargers in week one, Stockton's mistake-prone play was well on display, throwing three interceptions, taking some really bad sacks that derailed possessions. We only put 14 points on the board and lost our opener. Denzel Stockton has been a very polarizing quarterback in his time in this franchise, having 27 touchdowns to 24 interceptions as a rookie, cleaning up his play last year and showing signs of improvement, but then regressing when it came to the playoffs. Stockton's only in his third year, and this season is going to go a long way towards determining his future with this team. But I've made something here. I'm introducing today the Stockton Meter. As we've played through this series, the opinions on Stockton have swayed back and forth so harshly at times because of his style of play. It's been interesting tracking the comment sections after each episode and seeing what the current sentiment of our starting quarterback is. So I created the Stockton meter to visually represent the general feel around Stockton and a way to grade his performances. For week one, I'd certainly say that was a below average performance. And too many of those performances could change our future plans. Well, how would Denzel Stockton follow that up? In week two, we faced the Seattle Seahawks and we're set to miss Max Crosby, meaning Khalil Mack would actually get a chance to start. So which version of Denzel Stockton would we see? Would the struggles of week one continue? Well, the way the game began, I was nervous. The air mailed that throw for Rashad Bateman and followed it up with a pass that really should have been intercepted, which would have been his fourth of the year. Luckily, it was dropped, and he responded by then finding Rashad Bateman working the slot as he did in week one. I like Bateman a lot in that role. I think he can handle the volume coming across the middle, and he's a versatile player. But on this play, Anthony Clinton got injured, and he would not return. He'd be replaced by rookie Taylor Seymour, who draws the pass interference to put us into Seattle territory. Now with a chance to get some points on the board, stocked in to Devontae Adams, and a first down to the 21. Later on the drive, a tough third down, and Stockton is sacked on the play. We would at least get three on that possession, and then we give it to Alex Collins, the young quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. And after seeing the way George Garrison played against us in the postseason, I really want to see Stockton outplay these other young quarterbacks. Collins had a good throw previously for the first down, but our run defense got us off the field as we stuff Kenneth Walker. Here we're in the second quarter, Raider ball. Play fake, and Stockton throws a strike to Devontae Adams. The plan is to have Rashad Bateman do a lot of the dirty work over the middle, hit those play-action shots to Adams, and you've got to mix in the Josh Jacobs runs as well. A lot of ways we can hurt defenses. Jacobs would take us into the red zone and down inside the five. And on third down, it is a touchdown for Rashad Bateman. Where would we be if we didn't get Rashad Bateman to emerge last year? A 10-0 Raiders starts. Alex Collins, though, a nice pass on the outside to Jackson Smith and Jigba. And on third down with this drive, he goes underneath as Seattle gets their first red zone trip. With just a couple minutes to go in the half, he throws outside, and that's a touchdown to DK Metcalf to make it a three-point game. Now we go into the second half. Seattle football, and Kenneth Walker gets a nice run out across their 40. Both running backs looking pretty strong. And then Collins, off the fake, he finds Jackson Smith in Jigba. He takes it all the way for a 53-yard touchdown. Pretty ridiculous throw here by Alex Collins going across his body, outside the numbers, and then JSN does the rest. Seattle takes the lead. 
And here they are later in the third in Raider territory. They throw on third and inches and Metcalf is unable to make the catch. And on this play, Ramon Hayes would leave the game. Seattle then settles for a 58-yard field goal try that hits off the upright and is denied. A break for our Raiders as they get the ball with good field position, down by four. Into Seattle territory, and there's Josh Jacobs plowing ahead. And a couple plays later from the 26, Stockton throws over the top to Devontae Adams all by himself for a touchdown. And the Raiders retake the lead. Now we're on to the fourth quarter, same score. Denzel Stockton really looked in rhythm. Ball placement was good. He wasn't missing a lot of plays, wasn't taking unnecessary sacks. He spread the ball around pretty well at the same time. This version of Stockton looks like a guy you'd want to have for 10 plus years as your starting quarterback. Usually the quick pass game is his weakness, but I thought he did a really good job with it. But late in this possession, the pressure given up by the rookie Leon Hillhouse leads to a Boye Mafe sack. That set us back at the 26 and we had to settle for three. Daniel Carlson put us up by six with six minutes left to play. Big spot then for our defense trying to protect against the second year quarterback. Seattle starts the drive and Kenneth Walker breaks a tackle, makes a man miss and then accelerates all the way inside the 10. 74 yards on the first play of the possession. Just a couple plays later, third and goal. Alex Collins, touchdown to Jackson Smith in Jigba. Really nice tight window throw. Collins looks like a very good young quarterback. And Seattle goes back on top by one. 21-20, four and change to go. Stockton trying to respond to last week's struggles. And he finds Devontae Adams across the middle for a big pickup. Two plays later, a third down. Stockton goes underneath, and the rookie Taylor Seymour on his first NFL reception fights for the first down to extend the drive. And all we needed here was a field goal to take the lead. Stockton protected, and across the middle, it's Bateman. That put us into field goal range as we began to work on running the clock down. Jacobs takes us inside the 15, but can't quite get the first down. Carlson kicks us on top, 23 to 21. The defense couldn't protect the lead late last week. Would they be able to do it now against Seattle? Collins over the middle, Kenneth Walker for a first down, but Seattle playing without any timeouts. And these checkdowns are going to force a lot of time to run off. They go down to 12 seconds, third down, have to get a larger play, and Metcalf makes the catch, but is stopped in bounds, and that is your ball game. Seattle comes up short, and the Raiders pick up their first win of season three in the franchise. And all the while, Denzel Stockton had a much better game. Far fewer mistakes, looked like the quarterback we need him to be. I have no idea what the future holds in this series. Usually we draft a quarterback, they prove they're a franchise caliber guy, and they're our quarterback for basically the entire franchise. But right now I feel there's still a step that Stockton has to take. I'm probably not going to make any decisions until the end of this year when the fifth year option comes up. So buckle up everybody, there's a lot more football to play. They gave us a couple out-of-conference opponents early in the schedule. I like to sim past this Cardinal game, but we had a couple injuries in that Seattle matchup. The big one is that Ramon Hayes had a dislocated hip, and he's going to miss the next four weeks. I like the way he played in week one. I really thought this was going to be a breakout season, and unfortunately now his season is going to be on hold now for a little bit. We have two injuries at defensive tackle, so our depth there is really going to be tested. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to sign somebody. We only have Michael Pierce and rookie Tim Presley under contract. We are going to be releasing Don Sharp as we'll go down to like five safeties. And we're going to go and sign Dalvin Tomlinson. I'm just going to go after that 88 awareness. We just got to get a veteran in there who can hold it down until we get healthier. Let's get this young interior a little bit stronger and get the upgrade to Sean Childress. A simple pass block power boost. So we've had one disappointing performance, one much improved victory. Now in week three, we blow the doors off the Arizona Cardinals. 31 to nothing. A dominant defensive performance. How about a shutout? Does that sound good to everybody? We picked off Kyler Murray, sacked him five times, and he only had 101 passing yards. Josh Jacobs found the end zone twice, and Shakir Cheney got in the end zone as well. It was a big day receiving for Devontae Adams. Anthony Clinton came back for 4-50. It was Trayvon Merrig who had our interception, and former Raider corner Nate Hobbs picked one off for the cards, while Max Crosby, Robert Spillane, Tyree Wilson, Khalil Mack, and Michael Pierce all got sack credit. Not bad. We're approaching the end of the first quarter of the season. What more do you need out of Denzel Stockton? I kind of wish there was like an option that just said like consistency. That's what it boils down to. Like there's nothing wrong with Stockton's best games. There are three or four games I know are going to happen where if you isolate those, he looks incredible. But if history repeats itself, then there's going to be three or four where you're looking at a backup quarterback. Consistent teams are the ones that win in the playoffs. To win a Super Bowl, you have to win at least three or four games in a row. And if you can't play at the top of your game consistently against the best teams, then you're just not a franchise quarterback. You're a regular season quarterback. Oh, they just gave Josh Jacobs a speed boost. Getting even better here at age 28. The number one running back they have him right now in the NFL. I'll check out uh, this upgrade here for Bateman and we'll go look at the top running backs at this point. We're going to go slot here for Bateman. Try to get some of that route running. And we do get one short, one acceleration, which also helps out just creating separation. So I'm happy with that. So Josh Jacobs is apparently the top rated running back right now in our franchise. And that's right above Isaiah Pacheco, Kenneth Walker, Travis Etienne, and Jonathan Taylor. So I have the regression, of course, cranked up very high so that the best running backs aren't all like 30, 31 years old, as you've seen in many past franchises of mine. Got B. John Robinson now soaring towards the top. Brees Hall not far behind. Devon A. Chan. And my favorite part, of course, you've got the drafted running backs from the first couple years who are also solidifying themselves. So here's Dion Lambert, 83 overall, and they have him as the number 19 running back. I feel like everybody wants to move a little bit quicker through this season, so we're going to sim even more today. Next, we get the 3-0 Patriots, who on paper, who are only a 78 overall with a pretty weak offense. And that turns into our third consecutive victory, 38-17. Stockton for two touchdowns and zero interceptions. Josh Jacobs does his thing, 93 and a touchdown. Cheney scores, Bateman and Clinton score as well. Really big day for Anthony Clinton as Devontae Adams only got a couple catches in this game. We had Michael Pierce pick up a sack and Trayvon Merrig again with the INT. We got our QB1 check-in now in week five. It feels like everything is starting to come together offensively. It's kind of scary to think that we're just getting started and are capable of more. It has been a really good stretch for Denzel Stockton. Plus 10 morale for everybody, including the comment section. And I really want to see that short accuracy get better. So let's go with a scrambler upgrade. Stockton is ranked one of the 10 best quarterbacks in our franchise. And I think on his best days, that's certainly true. I don't know if the accuracy is what it's going to take, though, to get him more consistent. It might just come down to traits, but we're going to have to just see what happens this year. He got much better in year two. Hopefully, he continues to take steps now. 
Let's go to Leon Hillhouse, who has one weakness here with pass block power that I really want to shore up. I don't know which one is the better archetype to focus on, but usually if something's low, attacking it there more directly helps. And strength goes up too. So now he's a really good athlete with 90 strength. That's pretty solid. And just really one weakness you worry about with that pass block power. And hopefully we can get enough upgrades to get that to a better point soon. He only made one catch, but good to see Taylor Seymour already contributing this season. And my plan is to develop him into a potential slot receiver starter. I think the route running won't take that long to get there. He has good enough to release to where you don't have to only play him in the slot. But given how good our top two wideouts are, the slot is the best option for him. After three straight victories, a loss for our Raiders 28-14. Not so hot for the offense this time around. Stockton had no touchdowns and no interceptions and only completed 48% of his passes. We just couldn't get much going, it appears. Not because of turnovers or anything. What do you mean Stockton had two rushing touchdowns? That, that's a weird stat line he just put together. Big day for Bateman. Looks like back-to-back -back quiet ones for Devontae Adams, really surprisingly. But I think our defense should be getting healthier now. Milton Williams is back. He picked up a sack in this game. We're upgrading Shakir Cheney again this week. Some break tackle and trucking. Really nice upgrade there. And then we got Anthony Clinton. I'm just going to go all in on the downfield stuff with him. He has the dangerous speed. He has release. That's the best way for him to contribute. So hopefully we get some medium route running and we do get two plus three catching. And that is really nice for a player with only mid 70s catching. The Raiders move to four and two on the season with a comfortable victory against the Denver Broncos. 31-7 Stockton again protecting the football. Now Aiden O'Connell had to throw a touchdown in this game, but only threw one pass and Stockton wasn't hurt but only passed the ball 18 times. It was a busy day on the ground then, I guess, and perhaps Denver just ran a lot more plays than we did. Josh Jacobs had half of his yards come on one play, went for a buck 50 in the touchdown. Rashad Bateman scored as well, and it's been a while since Devontae Adams really got much going. Oh, and that rookie receiver, Cassidy Harris for Denver, he did not do a whole lot with just one reception. Our defense looks really good this year. We've graded really well to this point. That's one of our better performances. We are 7th in points scored, 4th in points allowed, and we're 4-2. However, you got Kansas City, who's a perfect 6-0. They're coming up on the schedule, but here we got the Cleveland Browns in Week 7. I wanted to go through this game ahead of the trade deadline and then see if there's anything that we need to look at for a move, but... 5-2 versus 4-3 certainly would have a very different feel. This week we play the Cleveland Browns, who are much better defensively than on offense. They still have Miles Garrett and a really strong trio at corner with Denzel Ward, Greg Newsome, and Martin Emerson. Then you've got Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa at linebacker. I'm actually really curious to see how Stockton plays in this one, because they have a lot of secondary talent and guys who can make plays in the middle of the field. I'm not really concerned about their offense, but I imagine we're going to see quarterback Hunter Jenkins if he has that QB of the future tag. So they ended up selecting him, looks like two years ago. Yeah, he's been starting for a couple years. So Hunter Jenkins against our defense, that's been a really strong unit this season. They've basically replaced their whole receiving core. Only Cedric Tillman remains. David Njoku is still there, but he's injured. And he's out for this season. And I'm really excited that we're about to get Ramon Hayes back for this one. I want to see him dominate. It's been a good episode today for our Raiders. And let's see if we can carry more momentum into the trade deadline. And if we want to keep up with KC and have a chance at winning this division... You can't be losing to teams like Cleveland.
All right, Denzel Stockton. I think today can be a, a positive episode for the Stockton meter, but we have to see how it finishes first. And here is Stockton getting his day started. First in 10 at our own 25. And we're going straight to the air. Stockton off the mark for Michael Mayer. And that could have been picked off. Four-man rush, and Stockton is off the mark. I really don't want him throwing at Denzel Ward too much if he's getting the Anthony Clinton matchup. But there isn't really an easy matchup anywhere you look. Third and ten. He runs out of time, and Stockton intercepted! Picked off by Martin Emerson. Trying to hit Devontae Adams, who's been silent now for a few weeks. Not a good way to start. A short field for Hunter Jenkins and Cleveland. From our 36, they go to Nick Chubb, and he's taken down after a short gain. Thankfully, we have Ramon Hayes back. We need all hands on deck to slow down Chubb. Jenkins on third down, and he is sacked by Max Crosby back at the 41. And that's why we have one of the best defenses in the NFL. After that interception, the Cleveland Browns get nothing. Stockton from the 14. He's got his first completion in traffic to Devontae Adams. Gain of 14. I think they're going to contest just about every throw we try. Here's a run. Josh Jacobs to the left. And a solid start. He needs to get some touches. Here's Stockton. An easy one now underneath. It's caught by Joe Roberts. I love watching guys who are so low on the depth chart just get a chance and make even the simplest of plays. As a team builder, it's satisfying. First and 10, lobbed up top, Adams is overthrown, and he had a step on Emerson. That one hurts to miss. It's second down, and Stockton fakes, and throws a dart to Bateman inside the Cleveland 30. It's not just a roller coaster ride from game to game, but from play to play, you never know what's going to happen. We're 30 yards out now, trying to beat the press, and caught by Adams, gets away, and is taken down at the 11. Raiders seven yards out, Stockton scanning, and off the mark for Bateman. He just rushed it. One more try, third down, pressure Garrett, and down goes Stockton. Leon Hillhouse has gotten some rough matchups here in his first season, but that's the way the league is. And he's having some tough growing pains here against the elites. Well, settling for a field goal doesn't feel very good there. Cleveland takes over now at their own 25. And they go with the run, and Nick Chubb picking up five. On second down, nice reception. Caught at the 36-yard line. And that is Cedric Tillman. They got some young receivers on this team. A couple that looked pretty interesting. Jenkins downfield. That is caught. What a play by Tillman. Hunter Jenkins back to pass. A wobbler that is caught along the sideline. And that's Winston. First down, Chubb can catch the football and pick up six. And now they give him the carry. Chubb breaks the tackle and nearly scores. Play fake. Jenkins sacked by Devin White. Back at the 10. Let's see if we can keep them to three. Jenkins pumps, pressured, sacked again by Max Crosby. Again, defense playing well when it really matters the most. I can see this. What? 
Why'd they go for it? Was it really third down? Did I get my plays mixed up? I thought we just watched third down. It was a sack. That must have been a play ahead. So apparently Cleveland gets a 22-yard touchdown on third and goal. I don't think we're going to see a high-scoring game. We just kicked it back to Cleveland. They're actually moving the football pretty well with this young quarterback. And they'll run with Chubb. And how about Wilson? Grabbing on with one arm and making the play. Here's Jenkins. And the pass is caught. Reaching ahead short of the marker. That's Thurston. Third and inches. And a conversion. Going right back to Thurston. Jenkins from the 28, and now Chubb makes the catch. Another first down, and Hunter Jenkins is 11 for 12. He's thrown accurately, protected the ball. Chubb again on the reception for nine. Third and one, Jenkins a laser. That's bat of the way by Jalen Johnson. The Raiders again get the stop down here, and the Browns will look to go for it. No stop yet. That's a full yard to go. Jenkins to pass, and it's off the mark. Raiders football. All right, a slow start for our offense today. I feel like we've barely seen the field. Let's see if we can drive the length of the field now. We started our eight-yard line. On first down, Michael Mayer, nice play, getting five. A quick pass again to Michael Mayer as Stockton is now six for 13. Trying to get things under control. Four and change to play in the first half. Cleveland's got a great defense. They send four at Stockton, and we're not going to get there. Three short ones to Mayer, and it's not enough. Cole boots this one away, and it's a great kick as we get them pinned at their 32-yard line. And Hunter Jenkins is looking like a star today. Down below, I just saw that Bailey Zappi's playing. That's a catch on the outside. Yeah, Cleveland's moving the football much better than we are. Third and inches. Nick Chubb gets the first down with ease. Up to 27 rushing yards. So he's barely gotten going. And here's Cleveland just throwing the ball. Not really all over the place, but they've hit the short and intermediate stuff consistently. Now Chubb bottled up again. Our run defense does seem to be far improved in some ways, I guess. Now I'm thinking of uh, that long touchdown or long run that Kenneth Walker had against us. Chubb's capable of breaking one at any point. So here is second down. Jenkins out of the pocket, and it's knocked away by Sneed. Now that's an impressive play. Third down, Jenkins from the pocket. It's cut shy of the marker. And this again could be a spot to go for it. And instead they're going to look to kick it on fourth and two. 7-3, Raiders will get it back with a little time left. And all timeouts. Ooh, almost had it, but it's a touchback. A 7-3 game, and Stockton finds Bateman. That's good for four. Now, with these corners, we might have to work our way down the field on more 9, 10, 11 play drives. That's really not where Stockton's at his best. When he can hit the big chunk, get us downfield in a hurry, that's Stockton's game. Third and inches. He fires, and it's bat of the way from Anthony Clinton. Again, Denzel Ward defending. You know, I'm not sure Clinton's actually a great fit for this matchup. I'm not sure anybody is actually a fit for this matchup, but I might try Seymour because he has the superior short route running. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference, but I'm willing to give it a chance. And I don't mind having maybe our, you know, worst starting receiver out there just 
Kind of being a decoy going up against Denzel Ward. I know in one matchup prior, I just decided to put Adams on the best corner so that we wouldn't have somebody else in a bad matchup, but they're so deep, I don't think that it really makes uh, a huge difference. We just need Stockton to look left most of the time. So 40 seconds left, and hopefully we can keep them from adding on to this lead as Jenkins throws a laser in quick for six yards. Four-man rush, and laid over the middle. Caught by Tillman. Nice first half for Tillman. Brown's not done. Lob downfield. That is incomplete. Legereus Sneed caught up to Winston. 26 seconds to play in the first half, and Jenkins dumps it again for Chubb. This is about as busy as I've ever seen him as a pass catcher. They fake it to him on third down. Jenkins scrambling and sacked. Tyree Wilson ends the drive, and that should do it here in the first half. We take it into the third quarter now, and Jenkins nearly sacked for a fifth time. Jenkins, that's open. Good catch at the 48. And there's Winston. Met in the backfield, and Chubb is stuffed again. We've made Cleveland very one-dimensional. Now they go empty for Jenkins. Downfield, and open! It is caught! Dylan Winston. As Hunter Jenkins already has a pretty impressive stat line. 20 for 27, over 200 yards. Taking care of the football. Running with Chubb and found a little bit more that time. It's five yards. Throws it out hot. And Winston fights for a couple more. It'll be third and short. Prime Nick Chubb territory. He gets it and converts. First down Cleveland. From the 14, pressure by Wilson. Jenkins has to throw it away. Here's Jenkins, pressure's on again. Gets it off, and it's caught! Touchdown, Nick Chubb! He was hit, it was wobbling through the air! And it's still a Cleveland touchdown! I can't believe they got six on that. Like. It was a wobbler as he was hit, and it was a perfect ball. Like, if we just didn't hit him, was he going to throw it out the stadium or something? It's 14-3. Come on, guys. 4-3 and three is not... It ain't what I want this year. I want 5-2 and two here at the deadline. We've got to have a much better second half. And so we come out in the I formation. Two receivers for Denzel Stockton. To the outside following Irwin and Jacobs is wrapped up. Denzel Ward was not going to let go. Taylor Seymour is top of your screen and we run left with Jacobs. He stopped after a short gain and now Sean Childress. He's shaken up and will exit. That is not a good sign as he goes into the locker room. Third and four. These conversions have not come easy. It's off the mark for Jacobs, and we fail again. Bruce Sternum is usually an end-of-game injury, so Childress is done for the day. A 14-3 game, and Crosby in the backfield takes down Nick Chubb. On second down, it's cut, though, and Jenkins hits the pass for 11. I can't believe how much they've been able to get away with not running the football well. Jenkins has been so good. Third down. Four-man rush. Floats it. Caught! First down! Dylan Winston. Hunter Jenkins is putting on a show today. 300-plus yards, a couple touchdowns. And they're already up 11. Threatening to score more. 
Play fake. Pressure is slow. Jenkins sacked again by Diablo and Tyree Wilson. Third and 17. Jenkins floats again. Caught. Touchdown. Or down to the one is Winston. This Dylan Winston is having a day. Eight catches, a buck 45. I got to go see what these ratings are because he is destroying this secondary. 90 speed. It's okay. His route running is pretty good across the board for a young player. 82 short, 80 medium, 75 deep. That to go a 74 release. I don't know. He's good, but I don't think he should be dominating the defense quite like this. So now Cleveland is set up inside the one. It's a fake, and this time we get him down at the seven. We've racked up a lot of sacks today, but the secondary has not been able to make plays. We got six sacks. When you get six sacks, you should be able to keep the quarterback from having a good day. Not the case here. Third and goal coming up. Inside. Chug. Touchdown. Cleveland. What is going on this week, man? Just when you're starting to get confident again. I was trying to believe. Well, it's going to take a miracle from here on out. And out to Jacobs we go. It is a first down. One of our better passing plays of the day. So we go to Jacobs now to the right, and that gets nothing. That is only six carries for Josh Jacobs. So we've been pass heavy. That hasn't worked, and we've barely had the ball. Losing the time of possession game. On second down, Stockton feels the pressure and takes a bad sack of Miles Garrett at the 19. Third and 25, Stockton, he's going to do it again. And it's fourth and 38 as the fourth quarter approaches. What is he seeing downfield? Well, we're trying to get a big play essentially, and there isn't really anything wide open. Seymour coming back against... Denzel Ward, oddly enough, was a decent uh, option, but not when you're in the grasp of the pass rush. We go forward with eight minutes left to go. We've ran 30 plays. That's how little we've had the football. We should be around like 60-ish at the end of the game, and we're only halfway there right now. 12-21 passing for Denzel Stockton. It's looking like another quiet game for Devontae Adams. On first down, he sets up the screen. Jacobs heads outside. It's close to a first. Quick pass. Again, Mayer makes the catch. He's just not getting it to the receivers all that much. Six and a half to go. Now he throws across the middle, and it's knocked away. This pass defense is pretty ridiculous. That's caught. And it's Rashad Bateman. And Stockton throws it quick on third down. Adams can't stay in bounds. You know, I didn't realize how bad of a matchup this actually was. I mean, I wanted to see us face a good test. Nice grab by Seymour inside the 20. But I thought we'd be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this secondary. Love that play there by Taylor Seymour. Hope to see more of him. Four and a half to play in the game. Trying to finish strong somewhat. Off the fake. It is caught by Adams for six. And the Raiders make it a two-possession ball game. Four and change to go. Let's see if we can keep ourselves in this. Jenkins off the mark. 4-16 to go in the game. Again to the air. And outside, was that like a weird throwback screen or what exactly was that? Third and 12, a screen pass to the tight end. Oh, what a block. And he got the first down. 
What happened this week, guys? This is not our brand of football. We're getting steamrolled. If you were to just see that we sacked them six times and held Chubb to a very modest amount rushing, you'd think we would blow them out or at least win the game. But Hunter Jenkins has had himself a fantastic day. These pass catchers that I didn't even know about until today have shined. A chance to get possession here on third and seven. What does Jenkins have this time? He floats it across the middle. First down, Cleveland. We're about done here. And that is going to do it here in our last game ahead of the trade deadline. The Raiders will fall to four and three. Ahead of our matchup with the currently undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Do we look to make a move at the deadline? Is there something missing we could look to add? Right now, I, not a lot comes to mind. I mean, you could always use an extra pass rusher or something, but I don't think the team has a serious hole. I just think that we're a little inconsistent. Actually, if there was something to address, I think it would be offensive line, despite that being one of our younger position groups. So we started the episode with Stockton, you know, pretty low on the Stockton meter. Where are we now at the end? The other games we went through were really positive, and today's not so much. The receivers had a hard time separating. And one thing to note, too, like outside of Adams... We don't have a lot of proficient route runners. Like, Bateman is above average, I'd say, but their corners are really good. That didn't stop Dylan Winston, though, from having a really big game. And I thought we were a good matchup against their receivers. So what do we feel right now, everybody? What does the Stockton meter say? Close to the halfway point here in his third season. That loss, actually, has put us behind the Chargers... In the standings now in the AFC West. And if we lose to Kansas City coming out of the bye. And they're 7-0 right now. We're only going to be 4-4. Four and four. And we got some tough matchups on the horizon. The Dolphins are coming up. And one game I can't wait to watch again. I want to see Stockton versus George Garrison for the second time. Because Garrison outplayed him in that playoff game. But Stockton's fourth quarter was able to overcome the early game struggles. We've also got the Bills on the schedule, the Jaguars, Chiefs again. It's a tough schedule. We're not just going to skate by against weak competition. So how do we feel, everybody, with the 4-3 and three Raiders here in Season 3? As always, I'm looking forward to the comment section in this series. This has been maybe one of the most interesting series just to... Track the way everybody feels about the team. But that'll do it for today. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your feedback. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. And there's much more Raiders franchise on the way. Have a great weekend, everybody.